A little while ago, I made a video with a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts that I love using in Final Cut Pro, and a whole lot of you in the comments wanted a part two. So, here's part two. If you have a particular video effect that you use all the time inside of Final Cut Pro, you could go on over into your effects browser, right click on it, and then select make default video effect. Once you've done that, at any time push option E and that will apply the default video effect. Additionally, if you've created a default audio effect by right clicking on it and then selecting make default audio effect, you can apply that effect with command option and E. If you want to tidy up your timeline, one of the best ways to do that is with compound clips. Select all of your clips and push option G. That will bring up this dialog window. You can call it whatever you like and then push OK. If you ever need to break apart that compound clip, you can do so by pushing command shift and G. That will break apart all the clips and get it back to exactly how it was. Something I think that everybody needs to be using more in Final Cut Pro is markers. To add a marker, all you need to do is push M. However, if you need to edit that marker, you'll need to double click on it to make any changes. Did you know that instead of just pushing M, you could push option M instead, and that will bring up this dialog window where you can make all the necessary changes right away. For example, we could change the name, we could change it to be a to-do marker, or we could even set it as a chapter marker. If you've ever wanted to make a looping video in Final Cut Pro, you'll know that it doesn't loop by default. However, if you just push Command L, that will set it to be looping. You can tell it's looping by looking at the play icon right here. Again, I'll push Command L, there is no looping icon, and then pushing it once more, you can see that the project is now looping. And you can get even more power out of this feature if you select a specific clip, making sure that looping is enabled, and you just push the question mark key to play a clip over and over again. If you want to take that one step further, you could use the range selection tool with R, click and drag over a specific portion, then push that question mark key to play just that one part of the clip. Now, if you've worked with Final Cut Pro for any amount of time, you'll know that if you delete a clip, everything is going to slide back in the magnetic timeline. However, if you want to replace that clip with a gap clip, you can just push shift delete and that will turn it into a gap clip. Another way to add a gap clip is to just push option and W and that will insert a gap clip wherever your playhead is at. If you've ever wanted to trim the front or the end of a clip off really quickly, you can just push option left bracket that will trim the start to the playhead or option right bracket and that will trim the end to the playhead. And if you want to take that one step further, you can use the range selection tool with R, click and drag over a specific part of your video that you want to keep, then push option backslash and that will trim off both sides at the same time. If you've ever had a hard time finding either a title or a clip that you've named, you can quickly find it by pushing Command F, then just searching the name of that clip. You'll see it down here in your index, you can click on that and your playhead will be brought to that exact specific moment. If you've ever worked with a client and they have a very specific time code for a part of the video they want you to address, a very simple way to find that exact part is to push Control P. That will allow you to move the playhead to wherever you want. So for example, if I wanted to move my playhead to exactly 10 minutes, 35 seconds, and 14 frames, I could do that by pushing Control P, typing in 10 for 10 minutes, 35 for 35 seconds, and 14 for 14 frames, then pushing Enter. You'll notice that the playhead has a immediately moved to that exact moment. If you've ever gotten an error message telling you an exact frame is causing a problem, you can find that exact frame by pushing command comma to get your preferences, find the time display and changing it over to frames. Now you'll see here in my time code that it's showing me exact frames. So I could push control P and type in whichever frame I want to find. I'm sure most people are aware that you can zoom in on the timeline by pushing command plus or command minus. But did you know that you can actually expand or shrink the clip height by pushing command shift plus and minus? Have you ever had a clip or a title that you've needed to stretch out for an extremely long amount of time, say for example, 10 minutes? Well, to do that, you can push control D, which will allow you to change the duration. From there, we can type in whatever number value we want. So if we wanted it to be 10 minutes, we could type in 10, then 00 for zero seconds and 00 again for zero frames. Then we'll push enter. And now this title is going to be 10 minutes long in duration. And finally, these last keyboard shortcuts are for those of you who use multicams. If you've ever needed to get to the angle viewer, you don't need to go up to view, show and viewer and select angles. Instead, push command shift seven. 
If you've ever needed to swap out an angle down on your timeline, rather than making a complete cut, you can do that by pushing option, then either clicking on one of these different angles here, or just typing in the number on your keyboard. So for example, if I wanted to switch this over to angle one, I could push option, then push one, and now that angle has been swapped out. This is super nice, especially if my playhead is in the middle of a frame, because I could just push option one or two, and now I have swapped out that shot without needing to make an additional cut. And finally, last but not least, is if you've ever needed to switch between video and audio mode, just video mode, or just audio mode, you can do that by pushing Option, Shift, 1, 2, or 3. You will need to be in the angle viewing mode for that to work, but it is a super handy tip nonetheless. If this video was helpful to you in any way, consider pressing that like button and maybe let me know down in the comments so that I can make a part three of this series. Consider subscribing if you want to see weekly Final Cut Pro content. If you're wondering what you should watch next, I highly recommend you check out part one of this series where you can learn 15 other amazing keyboard shortcuts for Final Cut Pro. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.